One of my favorite types of videos are iceberg videos, taking a rabbit hole that I've never even thought of before and diving into the far, far depths of it. So I thought, why not ask my community and the iRacing community as a whole if we could make an iRacing rabbit hole and we're gonna be here a while. But first, a quick rundown on what iRacing is to anybody who is brand new. iRacing is a motorsport simulation that was launched back in 2008. And the main draw to iRacing is the variety of cars that you are able to find online races for any hour of the day iRacing has a high barrier to entry compared to most traditional video games because not only do you need fairly expensive equipment to start out in, as in a budget wheel, and also the content itself on iRacing, you have to subscribe to the service as well as purchase DLC for most tracks and cars in the game. But at the end of the day, any video game that is approaching 15 years old is bound to have some crazy and interesting lore attached to it, and iRacing is no different. So today, I will tackle just that. We will start with the knowledge that pretty much everybody in the space knows about and then as we dig deeper we'll get into stuff that only real veterans of iRacing know, then we'll dig even deeper to where only some people know, only a few people know, and then some secrets that only a couple people know and have even been put in anonymously into a public spreadsheet that I sent out to the community this week. Starting off with tier one, which is common knowledge. This is the knowledge about iRacing that a lot of people have, even those who have never even played iRacing before. The first thing is it's a sim. Yes, iRacing is a simulation. They do not officially go by as a video game. And a big meme in the community is if someone calls iRacing a video game, they will respond with it's a sim. Some people might do it genuinely. Some people might do it sarcastically. And a future note on this for the rest of the video is that I will probably call iRacing a game a lot. Don't think too much about it. That's just what I call it. Don't worry about it. Or you can just leave a comment below. Laser scans of tracks. This is how iRacing gets track data into the game. They physically go out on site of these tracks and use their proprietary technology uh, of taking a laser scanning camera and just drive it around the track until all of the data from the track is scanned in 3D. So every single bump will be modeled and so on. Some people think that this is what sets iRacing apart from every other racing sim out there, while some people think it's not much more than a gimmick. Only on PC probably just refers to how there is no way to play iRacing on consoles. They have done various April Fool's Day jokes, maybe teasing that it would be coming to a console, but iRacing does not seem any interested at all to bring iRacing to consoles. So the only way that you can access this is through a computer or only on PC. YouTubers and streamers probably refer to just the tons of iRacing content creators out there who help bridge the gap between the sim racing community as a whole and iRacing, maybe like myself, but more probably specifically people like Dave Cam, Arca Break Weekly, or the big one who has its own spot on this iceberg, Jimmy Broadbent. Jimmy Broadbent is probably the most notable figure in iRacing content creation. He doesn't make much iRacing content anymore, but he definitely still does a lot of the big endurance races. He'll post iRacing content from time to time, and he even races in real life now after just starting out in his shed. Top 10 and not top 10 refer to the video series that iRacing make on their official YouTube channel, where they get a lot of views and it's basically just community sending in their clips of fails and wins, and iRacing makes them into a compilation just like SportsCenter not top 10 and top 10. Summit 1G and XQC refers to when both of these streamers played iRacing on stream to massive audiences back in 2021 and a bit in 2020 as well. Summit 1G was the more prolific of the two as he was driving on iRacing for multiple days straight and made it a part of his stream continuously and was even coached by Tony Kanon at some point. But Summit 1G eventually stopped streaming iRacing because of backseat drivers in his chat. I'm not very surprised about that. And XQC, on the other hand, he never really got too much into it. He played it one or two times, just long enough to get chat banned for saying what he would normally say in video games, but over the iRacing chat. The Logitech G29 and the G920 is probably the most common starter wheel for iRacing and really sim racing in general. Pretty much everybody has owned a wheel either like this or maybe like the Thrustmaster equivalent, but this is the starter wheel that everybody falls in love with and then moves on to greater stuff, except, well, some people don't move on. Tire saving is not just an iRacing thing, it is universal through all of racing, all of racing games, except for some arcade games, of course, but 
Basically, there are certain things and certain techniques that you can do with the car to where you burn less tire throughout the race so that you can have more tires at the end to push harder. Can I get a mic check or mic check is probably one of the most common things that you'll hear in an iRacing open lobby. And you've probably heard it even if you have never downloaded iRacing before in your entire life. People want to set up their mics in iRacing go, can I get a mic check? And everybody knows that they're a brand new player if they do that. The Coca-Cola E NASCAR series is the pro series for NASCAR ovals on iRacing. It has huge support from official NASCAR along with various sponsors that come along with NASCAR and is probably the most well known of the pro series in iRacing. This series dates back over a decade. It started out as just the DWC, then Peak sponsored it. It became the Peak Antifreeze series. And then somewhere along the way, Coca-Cola took on the sponsorship and they became the Coca-Cola E NASCAR series iRacing is expensive. That is pretty self-explanatory. It is definitely the most expensive sim that you can get into if you want all of the content, race every car, every track, and also pay the membership. So this is why a lot of iRacers and sim racers alike think that iRacing is more of a hobby than it is a video game because of just how much money you have to invest to get into it. Though I will say there are very cheap ways to get into iRacing, at least dip your toes in it and see if you like it or not before diving into the whole thing. William Byron started on a computer is a big meme and the NASCAR oval community even from people who have never played iRacing before. William Byron, if you don't know, is the driver of the number 24 Hendrick Chevrolet in the NASCAR Cup Series and he started on iRacing and the commentators let you know that for a couple years. Real names refers to how you have to use your real name on iRacing. It's not gamer tags or anything like that. The name that you have on your credit card that you use to sign up for iRacing is what your name will be in the sim. And a lot of people like that and a lot of people don't like that. And for those who don't know, you can actually get that changed if you're worried about security or something. But iRacing highly recommends using your real name when using the game. Rain being teased refers to how iRacing is always talking about how the rain update is going to be coming soon and the larger sim racing community pretty much is all aware of how there is no rain in iRacing just yet and how pretty much all the other sims have it but iRacing is taking their sweet time, dialing it in, and maybe we will get it soon. Pandemic NASCAR refers to how iRacing was used as a vessel to keep NASCAR going during the pandemic and how it actually became one of the most viewed esports events of all time, the very first e NASCAR Pro Invitational Series, I believe it was called, and that had all of the real life drivers plus some other favorites like Dale Jr. in it, all racing and iRacing at the same tracks that they would have gone to during the pandemic, but everything was locked down. This series was very, very popular for the time, but once NASCAR came back, it was basically dead. North Wilkesboro was a speedway in North Carolina that was some thought to be beyond disrepair and abandoned after not having a race run on it for over a decade. And that is when Dale Jr. stepped in and wanted to scan the track with iRacing. One thing led to another and that led to a revitalization of the track and now it is back on the NASCAR schedule. Speaking of Dale Jr., he is one of the biggest advocates for iRacing. He is an employee of iRacing now, and you will see him racing on iRacing quite a bit. Maybe not as much as he did years and years ago, back when he was actually a pro in the Pro Series, but you will still see him driving around in public lobbies every once in a while. iRating is NASCAR's ranking system. It's pretty much strictly ELO-based, so if you have a good finish, you will go up, and if you have a bad finish, you'll go down with some more nuances to it. Sims at Races probably refers to all of the real life events that have iRacing simulators at the event. So NASCAR races, other types of races, you'll commonly see a simulator setup where you can go and try out iRacing on their big setup with the big rig and have a lot of fun. And that's how a lot of people get introduced to iRacing. Max Verstappen is a huge player in iRacing. He likes to run all the big events that he's able to and he's even been quoted as saying that he thinks about iRacing even more than he thinks about Formula One. So that's a pretty good advocate to have, but some people don't have that great of opinion of him on the sim and we'll dive more into that later. The Daytona 24 is probably the biggest event iRacing holds every single year, garners a lot of attention because it is the official event, thousands and thousands of people sign up, and the top splits are some of the most competitive sim racing events of the year. It hasn't been without controversy of course, but we will dive more into that later. 
Kyle Larson racial slur is a very well-known incident where the NASCAR star keyed up on a mic in all teams, which was broadcasting to everybody, in an iRacing hosted lobby and proceeded to say a racial slur. This was then recorded by multiple people, and before he knew it, he was fired from his NASCAR team, and he had to retire from that. Oh, yeah. Arca brakes is a term that's used a lot in both iRacing and in real life, and that is when a car crashes into another car or causes an incident because they did not slow up enough for an incident happening in front of them. So for instance, just crashing into another crash scene when there was no reason to and you could have just slowed down for it. Safety rating and licenses refers to the system in iRacing that tracks how safe of a driver you are. If you get a 4x, that means that you hit another car. If you get a 2x, that means you hit a wall. If you get a 1x, that means that you went off track and all that gets added up and gets averaged over the number of corners you drove and that's how safety rating is calculated. And then there is a license progression system where you go from rookie to D to C to B to A and that determines how and what series that you can drive in. And finally, for the last entry in tier one, it is sponsors real life cars and that refers to just all of the cars that iRacing has sponsored both on oval and on road and all of the real life liveries that have come out of iRacing sponsoring them. Some pretty slick cars there. Tier 2 refers to all of the knowledge that you learn right after joining iRacing along with just knowledge that even non-iRacers racing gamers out there kind of just understand through osmosis. First we have NR2003 and Grand Prix Legends. NASCAR Racing Season 2003 was an officially licensed game from Papyrus Games, but when they lost the license and shut down, what was left of Papyrus took that code and created what became iRacing. And Grand Prix Legends was a game that came out in I believe 1998 that was more road-based but on the same engine and kind of the same idea in physics as NASCAR Racing Season 2003. We're Gonna Lose is a popular trolling YouTube channel that has a lot of videos based on iRacing where he has accumulated 12 lifetime bans from various trolls on iRacing including driving backwards, driving blindfolded, wrecking people on purpose. He is not very welcome in the iRacing community to say the least. I'm just here for SR or safety rating is a term that you'll hear a lot in any iRacing lobby whether it be the top or the bottom but more common in the rookie area as they are trying to raise their safety rating to progress. What is ironic though is that a lot of the times the people that say I'm just here for SR are the ones that get involved in incidents, so take that for what you will. Protesting is the system on iRacing that you report other drivers for bad driving, abusing text chat, or anything really against the sporting code. There is a place to lodge official protests after every race, where there is a cooldown after the race of about 30 minutes to an hour, and then you upload footage through iRacing replays to send to iRacing for them to review to see if it was indeed worthy of a ban, a suspension, a warning, or whatnot. Protesting is always a hot topic of discussion, especially during races. You'll see somebody crash somebody and then someone will always key up on the radio and say, I'm gonna protest that or something, which ironically is something that you can protest on its own. Read the sporting code is something that you will see a lot if you are browsing somewhere like r slash iRacing or any forums. If somebody has a question about anything iRacing, the most common response is read the sporting code. The sporting code itself is just the rules that iRacing has in place constantly updating and a certain someone has read through it about 10 times. Williams Esports cheating is one of the biggest and most controversial topics from iRacing in the past couple of years where during the 2023 Daytona 24, the Williams Esports team was caught doing a couple unsporting tactics, one of it being cutting the apron during qualifying laps to gain time when that is not allowed, and the other thing is to use other teammates to block for teammates so that they have a better chance of winning. Between those two tactics, there were multiple people from the winning Williams Esports Daytona 24 team that caught bans from it, and there was a lot of public discourse online with other esports teams and what it meant to cheat, and it was just a big ordeal. Netcode is iRacing's predictive collision code so that you can have real live updates on collisions because with racing people from around the world, ping could be anywhere from 100 milliseconds plus. So because of that, iRacing has code that predicts the collision of two cars. This leads to a lot of janky situations where people make contact when they shouldn't have, people don't make contact when they should have, and you will always see people complaining about netcode in every single race because there is usually some sort of netcode related incident between two cars racing just a little too close for netcode's comfortability. 
Moon Car is the self-proclaimed greatest show in sim racing, a very popular stream whenever it is on. It is usually revolved around oval racing, but in the wackiest ways possible, usually with contact, wrecks, crashes, you name it, tempers flaring, there will always be that in Moon Car, and it is always a great show. Setup shops are some of the most well-known and controversial organizations in iRacing. They sell setups, so there are series in iRacing that have open setups so you can make any adjustments that you want, and people take some of the best setups and try to sell them to other users who think that they can be faster with these setups. There is a lot of drama that goes along with this because where there is money, there is drama, and we will get more into that later. Tech tracks are a way of iRacing releasing a track without completely finishing its graphics. They will have a fully functional track that has been scanned and has everything that makes it a workable track, but just with none of the scenery. Tracks like Long Beach started out as a tech track before being finished, and then currently there is only one tech track and that is New Jersey Motorsports Park, which is actually lower on the iceberg that we'll cover later. NR Night in America is an iRacing league or series run by YouTuber IDK Player, and it is mostly known for his energetic commentary over the oval racing. He regularly broadcasts this series multiple times a week with different car and track combos mainly on the oval side of things, and it is very high energy, high octane entertainment. Turn 1 pileups refers to just the absolute carnage that can happen in turn 1 of a road race specifically, usually with cars that are harder to drive, harder to get off the line, they bunch up. Going 4 wide into a corner there is going to be carnage and it's become a meme and certain tracks just have it worse than others where there will just be a multi-car wreck in every single race that you do and you just hope to survive it. Team Redline is one of the most historically successful racing sim teams, and on iRacing it is no different. Max Verstappen is one of their drivers, and they regularly win all of the big events, sometimes losing, but mostly winning. Red Bull Schemes and Jeff Gordon Schemes are the two most notorious liveries that you will have to go up against as you are climbing the ranks in road and oval respectively. Maybe it's because it is the most popular type of scheme, but they have a reputation of almost always being someone who is a weapon and someone who will wreck you and someone just to avoid at all costs. The JJ Spotter Pack or the Jimmy Johnson Spotter Pack is the most commonly used and most popular spotter and crew chief pack in all of iRacing that you can download and install into your game files and use something different than the default pit spotter. If you're watching a stream on Twitch, especially on the oval side of things, you are more likely to hear that spotter pack than you are to hear the default Aussie guy. NIS refers to the iRacing series that comes in both fixed and open varieties. It is the NASCAR full length series, except only some races go full length. Most of them only go to half distance. And this series is run only a few times a week per open and fixed. And it is the one of the most popular NASCAR series that a lot of people sign up for for each time that it's run. Monster Games is a game development company that was bought by iRacing and it was used to publish their very first console title which will be covered later in this iceberg. Some say that the purchase of Monster Games meant that iRacing wanted to come into console but more people think it's probably just a way to diversify their platform and also just get more ideas from different developers and have a bigger team to work together on. Third party software refers to all of the add-ons that you can get that help you on iRacing. This includes trading paints for custom paint schemes, race labs and caps to have more data available on your HUD. And there are a lot more programs out there that do various things that you can install into iRacing that help you get more immersed or give you more data. Time Majeski is more or less iRacing's poster child in a way. He is now in real life racing, he's racing in NASCAR and the truck series, but previously he was once the highest I rating oval driver on the service, where he had over 10,000 I rating, and he did this all from a measly laptop and wooden chair setup. Kind of adding on to that, there are a lot of people who started on iRacing before ever driving a car or a competitive car in their lifetime and then moving on into real racing at some point. Dynamic track was a feature in iRacing where the track changes depending on how much usage it has through cars, the temperature of the track, and other external factors on the track. Current tire model, the V7 tire model, does not do much with dynamic track, so people say the dynamic track has been broken, but in reality it just doesn't have much of an effect right now, and iRacing is working on making dynamic track more effective and more noticeable in certain situations. 
Alt accounts refers to people making multiple accounts, usually to protect iRating so that they don't have to care about racing on their main account. iRacing has been known to allow alt accounts, but if you get banned on one account, you get banned on all accounts. And I guess it's a good business decision to have people buy all of your content multiple times, huh? Achievements and certificates refers to the PDFs that you get for doing some sort of achievement on iRacing. Most people remember getting their first win one. You see a lot of people print them out, but there are also achievements and certificates for other things. If you win a series, for example, and a division in a series, or the achievements can be anything from owning enough types of content, winning on different types of tracks, or just logging onto iRacing for consecutive amounts of days. Centripetal Circuit is a test track in iRacing, so you can access this through creating a test session. And what it's primary use for is to practice slip angle on cars, drive on the edge of the grip, and just work on that in a constant circle, always turning. But there have been some very funny shenanigans that have happened with Centripetal Circuit, especially being able to drive on the fence. That one was a good one. Papyrus we talked about before, that was kind of the predecessor company to iRacing. A lot of iRacing's code came from Papyrus and their previous titles, and that is a lot of the employees as well were coming over from Papyrus to iRacing, and that's where a lot of the original senior members from iRacing came from. Toxicity probably just refers to the experience that some people get on iRacing when maybe people take things a little bit too seriously, or just like any other video game, they lash out. There are some very popular videos out there of some extreme moments of toxicity, which are honestly pretty entertaining. But in general, iRacing is a simulation, it's a video game, you're going to get moments of toxicity in it. And if you don't like that at all, you can mute your voice chat. iRacing UI, that is a program that you can launch from your desktop that has all of the portals to joining races, doing everything via iRacing. The iRacing only added this semi-recently. Everything used to be done through the member site, which is still active today, and old geezers like myself who raced iRacing back in the day, we swear by the member site more than the UI, but iRacing slowly but surely is phasing out the member site and making us do pretty much everything from the UI. So we're gonna learn it whether we like it or not. Grass physics. If you go off track in the Mazda Rookies, you will know that the grass is as slippy as ice. iRacing is very famous for how slippery the grass is, and some people claim not to be particularly realistic to how actual grass physics work. But in iRacing, that just reinforces that you want to stay on the track, because if you go off track, you're staying off track. The meatball refers to the black flag with the orange dot in the middle that says that you have to come into pits because you have too much damage. And even iRacing and their sporting code refers to it as the meatball in their glossary, which I find very funny. All right, it's a new day and we are going to go on to tier three and really start getting into the meat of this iceberg. 40 piece discount refers to in iRacing how if you own 40 pieces of content, so that's tracks and cars, however you add that up, if you own 40 of those, then you get a 20% discount on all future purchases. You can also get a similar discount by buying six pieces of content at a time. So this is the best way to purchase cars and tracks mathematically. The Scott Speed incident refers to when Scott Speed was banned on iRacing. Scott Speed is known from driving in Formula One as well as NASCAR, and he was a big advocate for iRacing. But in 2019, he caught a pretty hefty ban for continued toxicity, intentional wrecking, and just being kind of a jerk in iRacing overall. He was very notorious in the scene. A lot of people would complain about him. And then finally, after some people thought he was getting some preferential treatment, iRacing at last did something about it. R slash Simracing Stewards is a place that you can go to see who is at fault in a certain incident. This isn't just for iRacing, but for all racing games. And they are notorious for being very confident, but sometimes not the most correct, especially with what I specialize in the oval side of things. Lost IndyCar license and censorship refers to in 2023 when iRacing lost the license to IndyCar and the Indy 500, meaning that they could not officially hold the Indy 500 anymore. And along with that, they started censoring people's bios and posts on their forums with anything saying Indy in it, which led to some really funny things where you would see asterisks in people's bios talking about something with Indy in the word, but not even referring to IndyCar or anything like that. Irisen quickly fixed that, but they still lost that IndyCar license and can't even run official IndyCar 
races on the schedules of what they call US Open Class B now. Just another casualty of motorsports games buying up licenses. We might go over a couple more of those later. Outdated track scans refers to that some tracks on iRacing do not reflect how they are currently in real life because you can't just simply go and update a track when a turn changes in real life. You have to do an entire rescan. So a couple of the tracks where it's like that is Spa along with Montreal as well. New Jersey Motorsports Park is iRacing's current one and only tech track. That means it's one of those tracks that was scanned and completed in a raceable way, but not in scenery. And iRacing doesn't seem to have any want to upgrade that into a full-blown track anytime soon because it has been sitting on that tech track list for years and years and years. So you can still race it with people, but you're not going to get the full experience. But it is a lot cheaper than you would have to buy it if it was a full track. Downtime testing refers to the downtime testing servers, which are opened when iRacing goes down for an update or for maintenance, and they keep those servers up for about 24 hours. And on those servers, you can test any car and track combo that you like, and you don't even have to own the content. So it's one of the best ways to try something out before buying it. It's just a shame that it's only available for a few days out of every season. There are a couple quirky things about downtime testing servers that we will talk about much lower in the iceberg. Chicago Street Course was made in iRacing. This is true. NASCAR worked with iRacing in 2021 and 2022 to develop the Chicago Street Course using their laser scanning technology without actually having to build it up in real life. And they made tweaks to that. And the final Street Course configuration turned out to be very, very similar to what they had originally drafted up in iRacing. Nim Cross is the most famous iRacing steward. He's an employee of iRacing and you will see him sometimes in races chat banning people who are acting up or it's very common to see when somebody gets banned or chat banned they will blame Nim or something of that matter. Joss Verstappen is Max Verstappen's dad, but on iRacing it is just Max Verstappen. That is his alt account that he uses to race in a lot of different types of races, and usually he is driving very aggressively on that account to say the least. Kern County is a short oval in California that has been teased to be added to iRacing for the past couple years since about 2021. Dale Jr. has said that it's coming and it's always coming soon as you hear iRacing say a lot and maybe by the time this video this track may have been announced already. The Talladega car launch refers to a place just off the pit road at Talladega where there is an opening between two walls and if you get a car into there just right it starts to fall through the ground but if it catches the edge of the texture of the road it might launch you straight up into the air. It is one of the funnier glitches I've seen in iRacing and it's always been around and they've never bothered to do anything about it because it's not very applicable in actual racing. No Le Mans Bugatti circuit is true. There is no configuration for the Bugatti circuit in iRacing. The only one is the larger configuration. And usually when iRacing goes to scan tracks, they would scan all the configurations like that. But we have never seen any sort of proof that that's ever going to be added in the game or was even in development in the first place. Spa 24 incident glitches refers to a couple of different incidents to where the Spa 24 was screwed up in one way or another. The first one was really funny. There was only 17x incident limit for a Friday split at the Spa 24. So if you even go off track, you're 1 17th of the way to being disqualified in a 24 hour race. The second incident was when there was no incident cap for a certain split in the Spa 24, which led to drivers and teams having over a thousand incidents over the 24 hour period because going off track going wide was of actually going faster in some situations and not having the incident limits keeping them from doing that they're able to do it all they want except their poor safety rating plummeted from that race when usually safety rating goes up during an endurance race Broadcasting is forbidden for some cars. This is true. The cars that iRacing no longer holds the licenses for, you are not even allowed to run race style broadcasts of those cars driving around any sort of track. The most notable of these, of course, is what we talked about earlier, the IndyCar. There cannot be any sort of Indy 500 broadcast, but somebody can hold an Indy 500, not call it an Indy 500, and they can record in-car POVs like Twitch streamers and whatnot, but they can't do a race-like broadcast like the very traditional manner. Talladega Gotta Pit refers to the most famous hosted session in iRacing. You'll almost always see one up guy named Mitchell Qualms puts them up and it just says Talladega got a pit they want clean racing they just run Talladega races hour after hour over 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 and you got a pit and it is an establishment in iRacing at this point and it's always comforting to see that in the hosted races. 
Hidden Dale Jr. refers to the fact that Dale Jr. and Steve Myers are hiding somewhere at every single track in iRacing. If you search around in free cam into some nooks and crannies in the track, you'll always find them somewhere, waving at you, chilling out, hanging out. Verstappen practices overtakes on iRacing. This is true, and it was referred to by Max himself back in 2015 when he was a rookie when he made an overtake on the outside of Spa, and he posted a video on Twitter afterwards showing him practicing that exact same overtake with his team Redline members on Twitter. Gen 4 is an accident referred to, and during week 13 of season 1, 2023, during their regular updates, iRacing accidentally released the Gen 4 car as the ARCA car, as they are the same exact car, except the Gen 4 car has higher horsepower. This led to the community wanting the car going into the game so much that iRacing gave in and added it as a new series effective immediately. Now, a lot of people think that the Gen 4 car was going to be added into iRacing anyways, but they were still waiting on new updates for the current ARCA car, but iRacing's hand got forced by the community wanting the Gen 4 car so bad after having the taste of it in week 13. Fuel saving techniques refers to the ways that you can save fuel in iRacing, obviously. Some of the most prominent ways are using the clutch pedal, or some people even bind the clutch to a button and then let out early for corners and then use the clutch to coast into them, and it's just easier when it's on a button. And then the other ways is under caution, you can turn the car off with the ignition button, which is I on the keyboard, and just do that over and over again like you would in real life, except you don't have as much of an opportunity to stall in iRacing, so it's more consistent. There are some weird quirks with fuel saving that we'll go over later and lower in the iceberg. Discontinued World Championships refers to the couple of pro championships that got axed after a certain amount of years, one of them being the IRX, the Pro Rallycross Series that hasn't run since 2021, and then the World Championship Grand Prix Series, which last ran in 2018, though I think it's making some sort of comeback in 2023, but I'm not 100% sure how that series is going to work yet. The Grand Prix World Championship, of course, being the Formula A, Formula One cars, whatever you want to call them. And now that iRacing has updated Mercedes in the service, then I'm sure they want to run a pro series with those. Brake dragging is a way to heat up your tires on an outlap or under caution or under some sort of pacing where you just drag your brake along with the throttle and the heat produced by the brakes in that point will heat up your tires to a point where you are going to be faster at the beginning. Uh, people use this for qualifying. In road there was extreme brake dragging leading to eye racing making some tweaks in the physics just to accommodate for people exploiting that. And those tweaks we will go over later down in the iceberg. Nibon 5 vs Setup Shop, so Nibon is one of the most popular oval YouTubers and he has gone to battle a few times with various setup shops because he does not believe in monetizing iRacing in that way and selling setups to people and it has gotten pretty messy, a lot of drama, a lot of doxing or whatever, all of, all of the bad stuff that comes with people fighting each other and we'll go more into that lower in the iceberg. Leahy helped 23XI win Coda, so Keegan Leahy is a pro driver for 2311 in the iRacing Coca-Cola series, and in real life he helps out 2311 in their sims, and he found something at Coda that he relayed to NASCAR driver Tyler Reddick, and Tyler Reddick credited his win at Coda saying that he had that much speed because Keegan told him a couple things, he found a couple things in the sim and they translated into real life. So it's pretty interesting to see something like that happen, and get such big results like that. Centripetal circuit on the schedule refers to when you see iRacing release the first version of their schedule every season, you will see that sometimes centripetal circuit is one of the options on the schedule and you'll wonder, well, how did that happen? How are we gonna race there? It is just used as a placeholder for content that has not been announced yet and will be announced later in week 13 and then added to the schedule after that. There was apparently one incident where the centripetal circuit actually ended up on a schedule for a race or two, but I couldn't find any footage on that. Esports Pros delayed the P Cup 992 new damage model refers to back in 2022, the Pros and PESC or PESC, they were given the opportunity to test the new damage model for the Porsche 992, and they disliked the handling characteristics and the damage model so much that apparently iRacing held off on releasing it for the entire season so that the eSport pros could race on the car that they much preferred over the new damage model. This is just a rumor though that hasn't been 100% confirmed, but it is pretty well established rumor at this point. All right, tier four, we are entering the rabbit hole. This is stuff that your average iRacer probably doesn't know. There's a lot of info on here that is kept privy between teams or was found out in one way or another. 
Tire temp reset is what iRacing added into the service recently to combat qualifying, cheesing, brake dragging, all of that stuff so that if you are going under 30 miles an hour on your outlap, your tires will automatically reset their temperatures back to where they started when they were on pit road. This helps so that people don't do the brake dragging where they're at 20 miles an hour, full throttle, full brake, and that is how they got the most heat in the tires back then but it is still pretty effective to brake drag at temps higher than what they reset at and still add the heat. That way, you just can't do it as long, obviously. Zanvort Rescan refers to how iRacing has recently once again scanned the track for updates. It's been over a decade since it was first put into the service, and now they're going to pretty much do a complete rebuild of the track as to bring it up to modern standards and include all of the new changes that have been going on. Ohio Oval is a bit of my lore. I did not put this in there, but Ohio Oval refers to the Mid-Ohio Alt Oval, where it is a kidney bean-shaped oval in the middle of the Mid-Ohio road course. So it's a very weird track, one of the weirdest tracks on iRacing to drive on, and pretty fun if you're into that sort of thing. I called it the Ohio Oval in one of my videos, and it stuck, at least in my community. I don't know how much it stuck in the rest of iRacing, to be honest. Max Verstappen races the truck. This is true. Max Verstappen loves to race iRacing's NASCAR truck at Talladega specifically, and he will probably cause some wrecks in those races, but when are there not wrecks in Talladega to begin with? One personal funny story I have is my friend was in a race with Max Verstappen, and he wrecked the field three different times in one race. It was honestly pretty impressive. Grip flicking refers to a technique that I'm surprised I haven't talked about on this channel yet, maybe I'll make a video about that soon, but it is a technique that kind of takes advantage of the tire model, though some people claim that it's more or less a thing in real life too. It's where right before you're ready to turn for real, you just flick your wheel to the left to kind of get your car's weight shifted before you're turning, and what it does is it helps you turn into the corner without that sort of extra bit of resistance from the car from the beginning. It just kind of gets the car out of the idea of going straight and it just flicks the car into the corner and then you're able to drive it with more rotation for the rest of the corner. It's a very common technique in certain cars and definitely ovals for a big amount of cars, and that is how people gain speed on corner entry a lot of the time. The 1985 Indy 500 game refers to iRacing's predecessor company, Papyrus's very first title launch, so this is where it all began. Some of the code from that game probably ended up into iRacing one way or another, and it is just pretty much the origin story, which is ironic because iRacing can't even put the word Indy in their game anymore. Fernando Two Spaces Alonso refers to Fernando Alonso's real iRacing account. The original Fernando Alonso, how it's regularly supposed to be, is not actually him. And you'll know it is him if there are two spaces between Fernando and Alonso. You'll kind of see it looks a little bit weird, and if it looks a little bit weird, that might be the real deal. You'll see him running rookie cars a lot. I think I've seen him running GT3s as well from people, but I'm not 100% sure what he runs these days. Austin Ogonoski ban refers to the controversial YouTuber Austin Ogonoski who made a lot of videos criticizing iRacing while being on the service for various reasons, one of them actually being the grip flicking method we were talking about earlier, and iRacing at some point banned him off the service for continuous criticizing of the service. They thought he was too negative about them and they just did not want him to be representing them in any sort of way. So they banned him off the service, but he is still making videos just not as much on iRacing or about iRacing. And he did have an alternate account at one point that did end up getting banned as well. The 2022 Podium 500 was one of the most controversial races of iRacing of all time. What happened was that the Podium 500 is a event where it's like the Daytona 500 run by a company called Podium and it is open for everyone to sign up for. And in the 2022 edition on the final lap, there a driver named Lake Peterson who was unknown to the entire community pretty much wrecked Garrett Mains, a pro driver on coming to the checker flag to take the win. What happened after that was that the gaming council took away the win and the thousand dollar prize and gave it to Garrett Mains until there was a community uproar until finally someone realized that the gaming council had no authority to do that in the first place and race controls calls are final, giving Lake Peterson back the win of the underdog story and the thousand dollar prize along with it. Bubba Wallace losing sponsor refers to in the NASCAR Pro Invitational series on iRacing in 2020 when Bubba Wallace was driving the 43 Blue Emu car at Bristol. 
He used up both of his fast repairs in the first 10 laps and then received damage again and quit out of the race entirely. This caused the sponsor Blue Emu to kind of go on social media and denounce being a quitter and dropped him as a sponsor subsequently. Scott Dixon ban, I'm not 100% sure about actually. This could actually go lower on the list. I thought it was more common knowledge. I knew that Scott Dixon was publicly criticized at iRacing a couple times about the physics in iRacing not being up to spec with what they have in their sims. I don't think he ever got banned for that though, so I'm not 100% sure what this is about. Dirt release on April Fools happened on April 1st of 2016, where they released a video called Dirt Confirmed. Now iRacing is very known to release April Fools Day videos of various dumb products, but what the funny part about this was that they were actually working on Dirt at the time, and it was kind of subverting the expectations of releasing that on April Fools, and then confirming the following Monday that yes, they were actually working on Dirt, and the April Fools was an April Fools. Pretty meta April Fools, and they did release Dirt eventually, of course. The V6 tire model is still being used. This refers to how a couple series in iRacing are still using the older tire model, the V6 tire model. iRacing is currently on the V7 tire model, and it is very different than the V6 tire model. The V6 tire model is a lot slippier. It feels more like that ice racing that iRacing used to be known for, but the couple series that still run the V6 tire model are the Asphalt Sprint Car and the Silver Crown Car, and both an oval series, and then you'll also try out some legacy road cars also have the old tire model but I don't think there are any series that drive those. So if you're new to iRacing you want to know how it drove like in the old days go throw around a legacy road car or the silver crown or the asphalt sprint and see what the drifting is like from first person. Oxford Easter Egg refers to behind this building here. If you go behind there, there is graffiti on the wall that says, how did you get here? Which is kind of funny. You could tell this is kind of an old track from iRacing, so it was definitely the developers having some fun making one of the first tracks. F1 Cars on Dirt refers to how the F1 cars handle just a little bit too well on the dirt tracks in iRacing. You can get to almost full throttle going around some of the tracks and they just grip up if you get them in the groove and it's a very, very odd feeling, but very fun at the same time. No Meatballs and Rallycross refers to how apparently the Rallycross cars are indestructible. You can flip them, you can hit stuff, and you won't get a meatball in them, which is nice, but once you get stuck on your roof, not even not having a meatball can help you. School configurations are configurations that can be found at Legacy Lime Rock, Summit Point, as well as Laguna Seca, and what these are are tracks to learn on, but they will never be included in a race, so if you ever want to try a track that's mostly like their counterparts, but with some easier parts or some parts to learn on, then those might be good training tracks for you. The South Boston Kansas set refers to one week in ARCA when ARCA was racing at Kansas, iRacing accidentally loaded in the South Boston setup, South Boston being one of the shortest tracks in iRacing, uh, at one of a mile and a half tracks, and so a lot of hilarity ensued. People were gearing up to run the first hour race with this setup until somebody went and told on iRacing and told them to fix it, and they changed it back to the real setup right before the race started, which was a bummer to everyone, but ARCA Break Weekly ended up running a race with this exact setup, and it was a lot of fun for everybody that was involved. Simon Paginot, intentionally wrecking Lando Norris, refers to the virtual 2020 Indy 500, where when fighting for the lead, Simon Paginot under caution seemed to take Lando Norris out, taking him out of contention for the race, and there was a lot of controversy around it. Intentionally tanking I rating refers to a practice that is against the sporting code that some people do where they sign up for races and then don't show up and lose all that I rating so that they end up in lower splits and then win those splits because they are better than the people that they're racing against. Uh, this is a very bad practice that everybody usually speaks out against and a selfish practice at that too. Max Camber oval sets refers to the best way to set up an oval car for the majority of iRacing's history, I believe. I don't know, I'm not a setup maker, I'm not a setup guy to begin with, but I believe that one of the ways to get speed, especially during qualifying, was to crank the camber to max and have the car get the rotation from that way iRacing Mobile was another one of iRacing's April Fool's Day jokes. It was a very funny video where they said that they were pivoting to iRacing on mobile and they showed video of their staff members playing iRacing on phones, tablets, and whatnot. 
F1 Paints refers to how you cannot paint the F1 car, and when the W12 was released, some people found ways around that, and iRacing threatened them with bans if they did that because of their license with Mercedes. Because of that, the Formula A races, as they're called, are all Mercedes paints. No one looks any different than anyone else, but interestingly enough, if you set up a AI race with the W12 or the W13, they do have different paint schemes, so that's interesting that they never patched that in. Tier 5, things are getting very interesting as we're diving into the depths of iRacing lore. Some controversies, some scandals, and also just some really cool information that you might not know already. First up, Rockingham UK is a track that was scanned to be put into iRacing, but after a few years, Rockingham UK went out of business and shut down, and that led to iRacing not going forward and developing the track fully. It became a bit of a meme on Twitter when somebody would ask iRacing on every post when Rockingham UK was coming until Steve Myers, iRacing's president, finally said that iRacing was not going to add Rockingham UK to their list of tracks. Max Bant's 11 slowdowns refers to how a meme event got iRacing to change how cutting the course worked at Le Mans. Max Bantz is a series that is run by YouTuber Southpaw Racing where they just do really crazy, funny, and stupid stuff on iRacing. This was an event where they drove wing sprint cars around Le Mans and they were able to cut the course pretty much every single corner and avoid slowdowns. So iRacing took this and basically updated the track parameters to make it so that something like that couldn't happen in a real race. Not like that would be a real race in the first place. Apex Racing and Kiwanda Houses refers to the sim centers that these two very large race teams have where the drivers can go during endurance events to all race side by side, be at the same rigs, be there for team meetings, and just a place for them just like a gaming house with other esports to show it's getting pretty serious over there. DMP Racing refers to the NASCAR 2003 league that housed a lot of the early pros that moved on to iRacing, along with Dale Jr. himself, and this is actually where Dale Jr. met Denny Hamlin, and Denny Hamlin rose to prominence under this sim racing league. If you go back into the archives and watch some of their old races, you will definitely see a lot of names that you recognize. Nibon 5 makes the ARCA schedule just really refers to community-made schedules in general. When a schedule for iRacing does not follow real life, they ask the community on the iRacing forums to help make the schedule, and the community comes together and votes, and usually there is a head for this, and for the ARCA schedule just happens to be YouTuber Nibon 5. Course cuts from internet issues refers to a glitch or some sort of internet netcode type thing where sometimes if you blink out on the wrong place on the track, the game will think that you cut a corner when you didn't and give you a slowdown just because you blinked out. Running team events solo, so usually in iRacing you can only run a certain amount of laps per minimum before getting disqualified, but certain content creators and challenge seekers alike tend to make multiple accounts for these events, so like the Daytona 24 or other races like that. Like for instance, YouTuber Matt Malone for endurance events like the 24 Hours of Daytona will sign up for a race under one team with multiple accounts and then just switch between accounts during pit stops. New content favored BOPs refers to the idea that a lot of the road community has that when iRacing releases a new car in a multi-class series, the BOP is usually a little bit stronger than the rest to encourage people to buy that piece of content. This isn't a new idea, you see it a lot in games like League of Legends where they will add a new character and it'll be really broken at the beginning, making for people want to buy the character right off the bat, but it's not out of the realm of possibility that iRacing would do the same thing as it is a business. Super Speedway qualifying cheese refers to how people tend to get faster lap times at super speedways like Daytona or Talladega by doing really dumb techniques like starting off of the pits in third gear or staying at 101 miles an hour or in the old days they would just crawl around the whole track before coming back or even doing burnouts at certain tire models would also work. There are multiple ways to get these type of qualifying cheeses to gain time and there's usually always one active. The start line for Bark River refers to the fact that the start and finish line in iRacing's version of Bark River International Raceway is not in the same location that it is in real life. iRacing probably did this to help encourage clean starts at the beginning of the race, try to cut down on the messes that tend to happen during these type of races when you have a bunch of relatively new people or high differences in skill all going for the same place. Undeveloped content is just a vague reference to all of the content that iRacing has scanned or licensed over the years and never developed. I've actually made a couple videos going deep dive into those topics, so I won't really go over it here, but you can click this link if you want to see it.
Coke drivers using no force feedback refers to the fact that a few Coca-Cola eNASCAR series drivers do not use any force feedback at all when racing. This is very weird but happens for a couple of reasons. Sometimes with these oval tracks they know them so well that some of the force feedback might get in the way of what they can already see. And also a lot of them come from NR2003 where the force feedback model isn't that great so they just got used to driving on that sim without any sort of use of force feedback and made it easier for them to transition and be fast without using any force feedback at all. It's also very common to see high level oval drivers in particular drive on your Logitech G920s or Thrustmaster T150s. But as the years go on you see more and more people going to the top with high level equipment using a lot of force feedback, it's kind of traditional sim racing stuff so it might be going in the other direction nowadays. Oxford Plains configurations refers to the two Oxford Plains configurations that were supposedly going to be put in the game or were at least scanned. One of them was the Oxford Mini Mile, so that was a, basically a go-kart track that is very small, about a tenth of a mile long that you really couldn't fit any cars on in iRacing. And the other is a dirt configuration for Oxford Plains that was rumored to be added. Both of those will probably never see the light of day in iRacing. And you'll probably only see the Oxford Mini Mile as people driving around it as it does exist in terms of the scan, but just not in terms of actual racetrack. Invisible walls at I-55 refers to I-55 Speedway after the recent patch in 2023 season three, there were some semi-invisible green walls that you could hit that were accidentally left in on the update and were quickly taken out, but it led for some funny clips. Tape games refers to the tricks that were used applying tape in the Xfinity and the truck car for pretty much all of iRacing's history to the point where they made it in the recent update in season three, 2023, where tape is not even something that you can change anymore. It's either a qualifying tape or a racing tape, no percentages, which is very crazy because that just shows how far the games went with setups and how people were just driving on the edge of blowing up at any given point. ARCA is Nationwide Class B refers to at this point in time, so the middle of 2023, the current ARCA car is actually the same car, the same model, as the B-Class Nationwide car was upon release of iRacing. Once those got upgraded and went into the next generation, the ARCA car got the old generation as is kind of customary in iRacing, but as time went along, ARCA never really saw the same updates that NASCAR got, so we are still using the original Class B car from iRacing with a different tire model, of course, in ARCA today. IndyCar drivers hate the tire model is something that was common among many of the IndyCar drivers, so Joseph Newgar and spoke out about it. Scott Dixon didn't really like how iRacing felt. Uh, they've had a lot to say around the time of when COVID hit and everyone went to go race on Sims. They said that their Sims race a lot better. I believe they're like usually R Factor 2 based, but it led to a lot of discourse online about if iRacing's tire model is kind of jump the shark or not because you have all these pros saying they don't like it. And it just turns out that it seems like different places in the pro scene, like ovals, road, open wheel, they all kind of have differing opinions about the tires and iRacing, so the IndyCar in particular just doesn't like it at all. Next gen Chevy not having the correct decals refers to apparently upon release, the next gen Chevy just did not have the correct decals and they had to update it. I don't know which ones exactly, I couldn't find any information online, but I assume it ended up looking a little bit too much like the previous gen six car or something. FirstRacing.net was the original name for iRacing. That was what their company started out as. You can see some promos I'll put up here where they are called FirstRacing.net and they even have some test pictures right here. Kind of the proof of concept where they go by First Racing until finally they changed the name. Around 2008, that's the whole Apple fad time and they became iRacing. I'm not gonna talk about Jason Jacoby and NASCAR too much. I just wanted to put them on the list so I wouldn't get comments about it. If you wanna know more about them, you can look them up on YouTube. There are already videos about them. NASCAR Next Gen Reverse Exploit was another funny thing that happened upon the release of the Next Gen car in iRacing. There were a few funny things with this car because this car actually released on iRacing before it was even de debuted in real life. So there was a lot of guesswork on this and something that slipped through the cracks was that this car had the ability to go over 200 miles an hour in reverse. So you would go into some open hosted lobbies and see people legitimately trying to race backwards. It was a hilarious time as a lot of the times after updates are in iRacing iRacing dollar scams refers to some scams that went on around 2021 in iRacing where people would solicit iRacing dollars from people or use it to scam others in some sort of way to the point where iRacing actually 
got rid of the ability to send people iRacing dollars for a little while while they tried to figure out how to deal with this scam. And the last entry in tier 5, we have the Porsche P133, which you might be saying to yourself, that's a tractor. And yes, it is a tractor, and it was revealed by iRacing for what else but an April Fool's Day video. iRacing has a lot of banger April Fool's Day videos, and this one might have actually been one of the lesser known ones, but it was still a very good one. Tier 6, we are getting into some degenerate stuff, some stuff that you probably didn't even ever want to know about, some stuff that you could have done without knowing for the rest of your life, but hey, you've already made it this far, let's strap right in. So the first item on this tier is going to be IRL Pro Driver Alt Accounts. There are quite a few pro drivers that actually are very active on iRacing, but not on accounts that say their name on it, they are going to be under an alias. So if you're racing, you might be racing with one of the pros that you know very well, but you might not ever know know it because you'll never know that it's them. Stafford Mini refers to the track that is only available to drive during downtime testing that was originally just supposed to be an alpha only track and never really made it out of alpha and it'll never make it as a configuration into the main game but for a few days per season when the downtime testing servers are up you can go drive the track it's just a little legend so we'll nothing too crazy about it but it's very interesting nonetheless. No tax paid on content before 2019. I didn't really think about this, but there was no tax for any of the content until about 2019 when iRacing finally added that local tax, and this probably went along with some of their regional pricing that they started to do. Grass and sand traps are grippier referred to in rally cross and pro trucks and dirt road in general where in some tracks and some situations the sand traps are actually faster to drive through than the actual course itself. This might not always be the case because of how iRacing is updating dirt physics with the dirt refresh and they might look to do more, but as for right now, some of the pro drivers are actually driving off track in order to gain speed. Rookie Street Stocks betting ring refers to a practice where people will load in as a spectator to a Rookie Street Stocks session and take bets on who's going to win the session. It usually happens at places like Charlotte or anything can happen, but at the same time, it can also happen at the short tracks. There's usually just groups of friends in Discord, nothing too big, but I just thought it was really funny that this existed in the first place. Williams Esports NDA leak refers to how in 2023, a 15-year-old Williams Esports pro leaked the existence of Rensport and some data in a Discord server from information that he was privy to as a Williams Esports driver. They once again built up a bit of a bad reputation because of this and how there were probably too many young kids on Williams Esports in the first place. NR2004 refers to the game that was supposed to be the successor of NR2003, shocking, but after EA got the license, NR2004 had to be scrapped, a lot of that code was then moved on to the first racing.net or iRacing project, and leaks of this game have actually been found and posted online, but not with some controversy as iRacing has threatened lawsuits over this at some point, but ultimately they lost out because the content was determined to be abandonware. You can play the very early dev kit build of NR2004 from this link. I haven't tried it yet, but I think I will eventually. 23 Minute Outlaps refers to how in 2023, drivers of the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup at Great Britain figured out that the tire model worked as a way so that they needed to be on track for as long as possible before running their hot lap. How this ended up happening was in their open qualifying session, they would take a 23 minute outlap before finally running their qualifying lap just for that little extra bit of pace. This extra pace though ended up being worth up to 7 tenths of a second over other people's personal bests. Relaxed cameras refers to how in some hosted sessions where the relaxed camera setting is available, you can drive in third person, you can drive on the front bumper, you can drive on the dash. And these relaxed cameras make it so that you can just drive any way you want in these hosted sessions, but you can't do them in official races. I made a short about them if you want to check out more information on them. Dirt physics are different between Rallycross and Pro Trucks refers to how after the dirt refresh, some of the physics between those two series are now different, whereas previously they were the same. It might not always stay like this, but if you drive the Pro Trucks and the Rallycross, you might notice some weird differences between them, and that is because dirt on iRacing is apparently not always the same dirt. Brand name censorship refers to how there are black bars that cover some logos on certain cars. One example of this is how in the Ford Fiesta, by the window net, there is a logo that is just covered by a black bar, probably because iRacing couldn't get licensing for whatever logo that was. While most of the time the cars come full packaged, it can seem that sometimes with certain scans, they accidentally scan a logo and put it in that ends up not being worthwhile to use or not being able to use. 
Derek Krause has never been an A license, refers to NASCAR driver Derek Krause, who runs a lot of iRacing and has gained a very notorious reputation on the service as being someone who crashes, gets into incidents, all of that good stuff, basically one of the most aggressive drivers on the service. And because of that, you can see from his safety rating graph that through thousands and thousands of races, he has never held an A license ever in oval racing. V8 supercar drivers like Arca refers to three drivers in particular, Brody Kostecki, Shane Van Ginsburg, and Anton De Pascal. They all drive at the Arca series quite often, but usually on the bigger tracks like Michigan, the two milers, maybe the mile and a half or some time. But when they like it, you will see them race, race after race. They'll race multiple times in the day, and it's always a very cool sight to see them battling it out. Ryko lawsuit threats refers to earlier in the iceberg when we talked about Nibon 5 versus setup shops. Well, one of the responses to Nibon making videos about how he doesn't like setup shops and why they are a scam, one of the owner of Ryko setup shops actually threatened a lawsuit against him and also threatened lawsuits against other people that disagreed with how setup shops are run in general. There were also other messy legal things with like copyright and stuff that I didn't really dig too deep into, but essentially he just threatened a lot of lawsuits and did a bunch of legal stuff and it didn't really amount to anything. Gen 6 Chevy Camaro was slower refers to the fact how after the Gen 6 Chevy was updated to the Camaro nose, it was actually slower than the Ford and the Toyota for multiple weeks until people figured it out right before a Coke series race. This was because the shape of the Chevy nose actually was worse with dirty air than the other two noses were, causing the Chevys to be worse handling in traffic than both the other manufacturers. This led to a big hubbub in the Coke series where multiple people switched manufacturers for for the Charlotte race, but a lot of people were not allowed to because of obligations to manufacture for their esports teams and had to suffer with a slow Chevy Camaro nose for that race. It was later fixed, however, after that race. St. Petersburg scan refers to how iRacing allegedly had scanned and was planning to develop the St. Petersburg circuit, but when IndyCar left iRacing's license deal for a motorsports game, iRacing scrapped the concept entirely. But maybe we will see the scan pop up again if Motorsports Games ever finally goes out of business and iRacing gets the license back. The Connor incident refers to an incident that happened in 2022 where a lobby of AFIX NASCAR drivers ganged up on a person in the race named Connor who had built a reputation of being a bit annoying, but the ganging up went really too far. There was some bullying that happened and eventually what came out of it was a YouTube video that got a bunch of views and a lot of people saw how toxic it was and iRacing ended up chat banning about six or seven or eight people from that race. And it also led to a prospective NASCAR Pro Series driver to get barred from joining the Pro Series even though he qualified for it. Pro Truck Series rigged in 2021 refers to how for the first season of the iRacing Pro Truck Series, so with the Pro 4 trucks, there was a series that led up to it where if you got in the top X amount of people and points, then you would actually just get put into the Pro Series, kind of like how it was done in the old days with the original Drivers World Championships. Well, because Pro Truck Series are so small of fields, a group of friends basically took turns winning the races and stacking splits and helping each other get points so that they would all end up in the Pro Series just by virtue of having high I ratings and stacking certain splits. Abbas Ladakh refers to a legendary thread on the iRacing forums in 2012 where a person of that name entered a race without the consent of the rest of the team and held the team hostage by driving their car and stealing it running the Daytona 24 for multiple laps before finally having to pit and relinquish his seat in the car. People call this Grand Theft Auto Abbas, there's a funny picture that you'll see here, and then also some other Funny stuff came out of it, a great thread if you want to read, I'll leave the link to that in the description. Tim Robinson lawsuit refers to how in 2004, iRacing LLC sued Tim Robinson, who was a beta tester for iRacing at the time. He made modifications for NR 2003 available for download that probably coincided some way, some form with what iRacing was cooking up at the time. This required a full cease and desist of his website, ow-racing.com, and the mods for NR2003 were lost to time along with it. Lag switch exploit refers to an alleged exploit, I can't confirm or deny this, I've never tried it myself, where if you lag your car in the middle of a corner, the tire temps don't update as quickly, so you don't gain as much tire heat if you were to just drive normally through the corner. You might see some people blink really hard during the corners and think, oh, they're lag switching so that their tires don't heat up as much. And 
That's probably not true, but allegedly some people do do that, and it's probably maybe at least tried at some points to see if it can gain an advantage. Clutching only saves in the LMDH refers to how in the IMSA series, there was an update recently where iRacing made it so that clutching no longer saves more fuel than just letting off the gas and coasting, and all of the cars except the LMDH for, for whatever reason, clutching still saves more fuel along with using the ignition and stuff than just lifting and coasting. Brake bias placebo refers to the idea that a higher brake bias makes a car handle tighter and a lower brake bias makes a car handle looser even when there is no brake in play. So there were some people that swore by this and showed proof of it by increasing lap times at certain tracks with these settings, but ultimately iRacing staff called it a placebo and we haven't heard much about it since. All right, as we get into tier seven, the very bottom, the very depths, there's gonna be some controversial things. There's gonna be some things that might get me into trouble, but just know that I, you should not take all of this for 100% fact. This is all alleged. This is all stuff that people say hearsay and maybe end up making it onto the spreadsheet. I might be relaying false information at some points because I just can't possibly know for 100% all of these things myself. The first, funnily enough, being time trial rating calculation. I just put this here just to signify that there is not a single person in the universe except for maybe one nerd at iRacing who knows exactly how time trial rating is even calculated. There's even a section in the sporting code that goes over how it's calculated, but if you read it, you will not know anything about it. You will know less than what you started with. You just are destined to never know how iRacing calculates time trial rating. Alpha tester leaks refer to leaks that happened in 2017 where a rogue alpha tester was unhappy with how iRacing was treating them and taking credit for maybe some of their work as they thought and ended up leaking a bunch of footage from upcoming projects in iRacing, some of which will go later, some upcoming tracks, some cars that were never set to be released. And they, even though they signed the NDA saying that they wouldn't, they exposed themselves to that risk by just leaking everything and who knows what happened to them but you know that iRacing came after them. 2015 grip hacks still work. I don't know anything about this. I'm not a grip hacker. You see, my hands are clean. I, there's, no, there's no resin on this, no grip, no anything. I don't grip hack, but whoever put this on the list seems pretty confident that there were grip hacks in 2015 and there are grip hacks now. So take that for what you will. Every copy is personalized. This is something that I didn't know, but apparently there is a way in iRacing, there are files that personalize a copy of iRacing for every single person that downloads it, every individual download. Who knows what they use it for? Maybe they use it to see if somebody is using iRacing incorrectly, or if there's a copy out there that got leaked, they know to shut stuff down in it. Who knows, but all I know is that every copy is personalized. The Daytona Short Config is also known as the Daytona Battle at the Beach Config. It is a short track that was run out of the Daytona backstretch for multiple races during the mid-2010s and had a bit of a history before that. And basically it was supposed to be added into iRacing, but for whatever reason, the configuration never made it out of Alpha. So it does exist. It is fully modeled, fully built up. It's a fully functional racetrack in iRacing Alpha. You can race it if you have access to Alpha testing, but you will never see it in the main game. Gateway Kart Track Scans refers to how when iRacing scanned what is now known as Worldwide Technology Speedway in St. Louis, they also scanned allegedly the go-kart track in the same complex as the oval. Now, they probably will never release this track without the go-kart, but where's the go-kart you might ask? Well, stay tuned. Summit Point Oval's clutch issues refers to a track that used to be in iRacing but has now been taken out completely except for downtime testing servers just like what we talked about before with Stafford Mini except the one difference with this Summit Point Oval is that there is a glitch the track is broken to where you can't even get off of pit road because of issues with the clutch. I have seen a couple people say that they have actually been able to get off the track with certain cars but when trying to replicate this I have not been able to do it iRacing Rally Cross is allegedly another track that was completely finished and is sitting in iRacing's alpha servers but will probably not be released for whatever reason. Usually when this happens it's because they don't like the track, the testers find that there's something wrong with the track that they just can't get around to fixing or if they're just not satisfied with the product in general, that's usually what happens. Weird articles on the iRacing fandom wiki, they might have been deleted but as I was going through the iRacing fandom wiki there was 
some really overly like specific stuff, but nothing that I found really weird. Like there wasn't like furry articles or stuff on there. It was more just like super specific about how many iRacers are in each country, which is cool, I guess, if you're into that. VRS spyware is the theory or people alleging that the VRS telemetry logger is pretty much just spyware. How they take all of your data and they are able to look through it and they are able to look through your iRacing files and there have been some very interesting implications to that. One specific one we'll cover in a bit here but another one that I'd like to tack onto this one is that a lot of pro teams say that they have found exploits for certain tracks or certain cars that they kept very hush hush very secret and then when they show up to the race they see that the vrs sponsor teams magically already know it so supposedly allegedly some people think that vrs have access and are sharing it with their esports pros the 2016 toyota tundra is the only car or truck in the game to my knowledge is only available during downtime testing servers i know we talk about the downtime testing servers a lot i just think it's really interesting how there is certain content that everyone has access to but only for a few days out of every season and this 2016 toyota tundra has obviously been upgraded over the years to newer versions of the Toyota Tundra, but this specific one wasn't put into legacy content, and so the 2016 Toyota Tundra is completely gone, but you're still able to drive it during those downtime testing servers. iRacing Daylight Savings model just refers to something interesting that somebody linked me, where a staff member from iRacing explained that at this point, daylight savings and time for sessions and all of that is all modeled on a per track basis through a library, whether they include daylight savings or not. I guess that makes sense. It's not worth doing anything on a universal basis when you only have that few of tracks, but it's just funny that something like that is just done through a library. Go-karts refers to go-karts. You might've seen it in a previous video where I covered it a bit, but in short, iRacing has wanted to add go-karts into the service ever since the beginning, but they have never really had a product that they were happy with to release to the public. So the, because of that, the go-karts have been stuck in alpha testing for years and years and years. There are people that have driven it and given various opinions about it. There are screenshots of it out there. And it was part of those alpha tester leaks where somebody took a video of go-karts driving around a track. But if you're looking forward for iRacing adding go-karts, don't be because this version is probably not going to be the one that's ever going to be added to iRacing. So if there's another go-kart that ends up in iRacing, it's probably going to be from the ground up. VRS leak next gens refers to allegedly another thing that happened along with that whole VRS spyware thing where with the NASCAR next gen at the beginning of 2021, a QA tester was testing the next gen while having his VRS telemetry logger running. And apparently they saw that the files had the name next gen in it and leaked the next gen somehow from there and got into big trouble with iRacing allegedly. I could be completely wrong, but that's just what I've heard from a couple people. 2008 build of iRacing refers to how there are still sites out there where you can torrent the original demo for iRacing back in 2008. So if you want to get a virus on your computer but also play some really old iRacing, I guess that's where you can go. There are some videos on YouTube of people driving this old version in current day, but there are also some other YouTube channels that show original footage from iRacing from way back in 2008 as YouTube was still around back then. Landon Harrison, Darlington, DWC win refers to the only confirmed time in all of iRacing history where somebody won a race by cheating. Now this was right after iRacing introduced dynamic weather and there was a glitch or an exploit with this dynamic weather where it came out where if you left a session your time in the session would stop while everyone else's would keep ticking. So if you left during qualifying and came back right before the start of the race, then your session would be a little bit earlier than everyone else's, meaning that on a hot track that it keeps getting hotter as the day goes on, you will be on perpetually a cooler track for the entire day, which is worth a ton of time, even with just a few degrees difference worth. Now, because of this incident, he did have the win that did allow him to keep the win. They saw all of that, but he was banned from iRacing because of it and they never saw him again in the Pro Series. 
Rain released in 2021 refers to a visual glitch that happened after an update in 2021 where people saw that on certain tracks if you went into the grass by a wall or in certain patches of the track it would look like visuals of water kicking up as they were driving through it. So it really proved that the weather model was already being worked on which didn't need much proof because iRacing had already said it themselves and because of that they saw some of the fruits of their labor so far but it's already been two plus years and rain still not in the game yet so we'll see. iRacing Hacker Killed Someone refers to a certain account that was run on an alias that went from 2,000 to 4,000, 5,000 I rating in just a couple weeks in Oval and was proven to be grip hacking by a team of people at iRacing and got shut down. When I was doing research about this account for a video, I found that this person who owned the account was actually going to jail and was in prison at that point for reckless driving killing a person. So I don't want to speculate about stuff like that, but the theory is that once they knew that they were going to prison, they decided to start hacking and iRacing just as one final hurrah. Daryl Morley was a commentator for the NASCAR DWC or the Pro Series back in 2010 until he went to jail for some very bad things that I don't want to get into. The spectator exploit was a practice that was happening with a few esports teams where they found a way to join some sessions as a spectator even if they were private. So what they were known to do is join a rival team's hosted session that was private and from there they were able to actually steal the setup that they were being used in that session as they were sharing them between drivers making tweaks and whatnot. Now the people that were caught doing this were eventually banned for this practice and the exploit was patched up so that they can't do it anymore. Drop Week in Coke series refers to how in 2022 at Nashville there was a widespread service provider problem on the eastern United States that took out a very large portion of the field from racing in that race and iRacing said that they wouldn't do a redo for that race because it wasn't their fault, it wasn't their servers, so why would they? Well there was enough of a hubbub from the pro drivers and the community to where iRacing eventually caved and gave a drop week for that season, which there has not been a drop week in pro series before that iRacing pre-release and beta footage. There is some footage out there from people that beta tested iRacing before it was out and there's some stuff that iRacing staff themselves have tweeted out over time just little bits and pieces that show what iRacing was like before release and it's always very interesting stuff. I want to see if I can get my hands on even more of it just for the history's sake just because it's really fun to look at what the game we love today started out as even though we know it started out as NR2003 and before but seeing the early development process of first racing or iRacing itself is always really cool. And the greatest deep dive topic of all of iRacing YouTube is that I have a Pokemon channel apparently. Uh, yeah, I, I, I put two videos of my collection on that channel so check it out if you want I guess. Hey guys, Justin from the future here. It's been about a week since I started all of this and I just wanted to include some honorable mentions for the rest of the video because there are some stuff that I ended up including on the iceberg that I either forgot in my initial recording and I don't want to patch things up and edit here and there and then also some stuff that I'm not really sure about what it is but from community response I'm just going to include it anyways. The first thing is Barney the Flagman. How could I forget you, Barney? Barney is the name that the Flagman in iRacing was given at every single track. He's a really busy man. He'll be at every single track, every single testing session. No matter where you show up, Barney will be there too. And how could I forget about the tire dipping incident at the 2022 24 Hours of Spa? Basically, all of the top teams had this strategy with the grass physics and iRacing. They would cool down your tires if you just drove your tires through the grass. So they would just dip two tires off the side of the road and into the grass, cool them down, and they would be faster because of it. It was a very common exploit that pretty much every single team used in top split except for like one or two. And some people got warnings, small suspensions for it, but eventually it was fixed by iRacing, just fixing the physics, making that not possible. Yours, Vern. I don't know what this means. Someone put it in tier two. Other people were like, oh yeah, you better put yours Vern in there. I don't know what that is. I've asked my discord, but that's 80% oval people. So yeah, you tell me what that is because I don't know what it is and I haven't found out. I had down iRacing on Mac and Linux as something on this iceberg because I just thought that was a thing you could do, but apparently you can't just straight up download it. So I was wrong there. So I removed that clip and it turns out what that really means is that you can download Bootcamp, get Windows OS onto your Mac or Linux or whatever, and then download iRacing from there. So a roundabout way just to be an Apple person. 
I also forgot to talk about PESC, PESC, the Porsche Esports Super Cup, and the All-Star Series that comes along with it. That is the premier pro road iRacing series, at least until the Formula Series comes back. And that's where you will see probably the most recognizable pro names battling out in iRacing for the road series. And then for their All-Star Series, they have a cool amount of streamers, pros from other types of racing all coming together and racing. Very entertaining stuff. I like that series a lot, actually. Man, I missed a lot in tier two apparently. Another thing that was in tier two was the 0.5 plus safety rating jumps. You'll see this question a lot on Reddit and stuff like that in the forums where people will be like, why did my safety rating go up or down by 0.5? Well, the answer to that is because if you go over a whole number threshold in safety rating, your safety rating will jump by an extra 0.4. So when you add it or subtract it with the others, it'll come up with a difference of more than 0.5 a lot of the time. And a bit lower on the iceberg, we have the pit road glitch, which was a glitch that happened at some road courses where you could start from the pits and be released before the rest of the field even came, especially for multi-class races. And this led to people getting unfair advantages by being on the pole no matter where you started because they started on the pit. People that exploited this would get suspended and iRacing would fix them as they came along, but maybe there are still situations that happen like that sometimes at some tracks. And finally, my last thing to fill in the blanks here is I am going to shout out a couple of the goats of the iRacing esports scene. On the oval side of things, Ray Alfala is a four-time world champion in the Peak Annie Free Series and before that, before it really had a title sponsor. And then also on the road side of things, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, I apologize, but Greg Uhutu is a five-time world champion on the formula side of things before that series got shut down temporarily. So they are both kind of the undisputed goats of the pro esports sports NASCAR and formula scenes. So there we have it, we're done. We have listed everything on this iceberg. There's gonna be more things that people submitted. I will leave the unedited spreadsheet open for you guys to view, maybe keep putting stuff into and maybe we'll revise this iceberg over the years. Shout out to everybody who helped me with this process. I had a lot of questions about research and stuff and there were some people that did some digging for me, people who provided road course knowledge and I'll put your names all right here. And then also I want to thank all of my members who kind of helped me with the editing process almost. I would upload the parts of this one at a time and people say, hey, you missed this, hey, you missed that. And guess what? I probably still missed some stuff, but they helped out a lot too. So thank you to all my members right here. And finally, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope to see you all on the track.